Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Our government has no business with business. And I'm saying, now that we are finally here, those FGN refineries. It was a major headline in most Nigerian dailies a couple of days ago that the vice president said, government has no business running refineries. I was pleasantly amused on one side, but also sad and annoyed at the same time. I have tried as much as possible to avoid saying some bitter truths on the subject matter of government refineries because it is still a burning emotional issue with Nigerians. And sometimes when the emotions are flowing may not be the right time to hit home a truth that is against the flow of those emotions. But if the VP had decided to go there, who am I to resist? Let us put all the cards on the table once and for all and have some frank discussions. And a starting point is to ask the question, how many government businesses are sustainable? Sustainable will mean it covers its own cost and leaves some profits to drive its growth without annual government subventions. We cannot even print our own money. Though the Nigerian government has a security printing and minting corporation, we import our own currency. Not an NPC has been speared from the periodic story of being broke and unable to meet its obligation as that when due. That happens from time to time. Where is Nigerian Airways? Not even the Virgin Nigeria or Air Nigeria variant survived. As a monopoly in this country, Nitel depended on government to survive. After almost a century of its existence, it managed to build up to 720,000 lines. Today, the private operators have among them a total of 199 million lines. We had an option to have been waiting for the day NITA will provide us with the telecom service we have today. Essentially, it is an established fact that government, our government, cannot run business successfully. So if we have a government that has not been known to run any business successfully, where did we get the faith that it will run refineries successfully? The first time I showed interest in what was going on with the refineries was in 1998, when the late Abacha regime was making some huge spend on turnaround maintenance of our refineries. Abdul Salami, who came after him, also spent some money on the same exercise. Dito OBJ, Yaradua, GEJ, and PMB. Even over the last 13 months, the sum of 85 billion was reported to have been spent on two of the refineries without producing anything. If we have continued to spend billions every year on these refineries for 25 years, and they are still not working, so at what point should we review that position and take a new decision? If this was somebody's personal business, will it be pouring hundreds of billions into it into this leaking basket for 25 years? The answer is no. So why do we think that because it is government, it should continue to waste money on these refineries? Now that the government has taken a 180 degrees turn and finally accepted that government has no business running refineries, maybe we can move ahead and forget about the fact that it took so long and cost so much money before we got here. But then we're here. I wish to advocate that we transparently transit these refineries to private operators, for indeed, 
Government has no business with business. Uh, Bola, first and mm. foremost, I want to ask the question. <clears throat> if government has no business, this government have no business in business, then they don't have any business in government. Being gov in, gov in Dubai. Yes. In Dubai. What they do, they don't say we have wasted money so much, and, and so uh, let us just hands up. In Saudi Arabia, they don't say, oh, we are spending money, we are not seeing results. When you spend money stupidly, there will never be result. If you like, let it be private business. So at what point does stupidity let me, get let me, off? Let me mm. finish. Let me finish. When this government was campaigning, they told us, instructed the same vice president, that you don't have a problem with the refineries. What you have is that money that is meant to turn around refineries goes into private pockets. Okay. So what, that what we need is to plug loopholes and everything would work. And now, you, this 85 billion that you're talking about that has gone into private pocket, Kaduna refinery, government has spent money and yet didn't refine one drop. And I have not heard that government investigated how those monies were spent. It's the same old thing. What, it is the same story. It's the same old when thing. somebody is inefficient and inept at his job, he now creates excuses. Oh, we just realized that we don't have business in, in business. Look, mm. now, government is building railway line. They don't have business in business, so, but they are building railway line. They will tell you, no, government has a stake in this. Tomorrow they will tell you, oh, look, we don't have business in this business. So we can't manage it. Okay, so what the, about there accountability? Is no, there is nowhere, even if it's a private business, if there is no accountability, the business will go down the drain. What we have here is a lack of accountability, lack of transparency. We're talking about power. And he, he, power hey, quickly. Here is power. the question, Libby. Quickly, because, hey, quickly. Mean, let, quickly. Let, quickly. Let me throw something. We're so talking about power. Along with it. We, have, we have privatized. Here we when are. When we privatized, people came and they bought into our uh, Jenkos, our discos. Mm. And today they are telling us they didn't know the problems were this enormous. We still have to. These are private businesses now. We still have to fleece the masses to ensure to that things. they are working almost 10 years down the line. These same refineries we privatized, of us are just sold. And they said, oh, look, just give us a few, few weeks. In 20. Uh, um, uh, Yara, you are reversed. In 2018, mm. in 2018, yes. Ibe Kachuku, knowing fully well all of this, government had no business in business. Yeah. Told us that by May 2019 our refineries will be working. Because they knew that is what you wanted to no, hear. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Been telling us what because we want to. because yes, as, that at, that is, time, as at that time, as at that time, at that time, Bolan wait. Yes. As I'm, at that I'm time, waiting. you have done research on this. It is yes. your script allows. Yes. You know, because at that time, according to him, what they just need to do is to plug loopholes. How come we are not talking about government plugging loopholes? You okay, see? let's hear from Aisha. Let's hear from okay, Aisha. Aisha. Aisha, can you weigh in on this? So, uh, uh, so for me, uh, the first thing that I want to ask is that when the vice president spoke, was he speaking on behalf of government or was he just speaking on his own behalf? Because one of the things for me, and I find it highly irritating, is the fact that the president consistently tells us the things that are wrong. He's the number two citizen in Nigeria. He is part of government. He shouldn't be telling us things that are wrong or things. He should be doing it. And I totally agree with Bolaho. Government has no business in business. Government should focus on issues like taxing, giving uh, the right policies, uh, securing lives and properties. I know, you know, giving us laws, enabling, giving us an enabling environment. environment for businesses to thrive. You talk about this, uh, the issue of uh, a refinery every year is the same slogan. I'm sorry to say, I equate it as the as the co as the corporate and legal four one nine business we have in Nigeria. <laughs> when any government that comes, what was the first thing NPC will tell us? They will start refining refining at full capacity. And we continuously buy that over. So because they know we are accepting, we are citizens who are dosa. We don't make demands. We don't ask for accountability and transparency. We don't we don't put government. Uh, we we don't put government on his toes and say, this is what you said before. You aren't doing it. Why aren't you doing it? Because nobody cares. People just want to pray for Nigeria to be good, but they don't want to do the right thing. So that's why consistently these things are happening. For me, the refineries, we don't have any business there. Nigeria should let it go. Even if it means 
The workers, right? NNPC workers, can we nobody, just dash them in the refineries and say, let all of you, go. take it and go. Nobody is saying don't Buy, let refineries go. Refine this go. product, pay the your salary, is, sell it to sorry, Nigeria, Aisha. sell it to other private businesses, and let's get away from it. Nobody it, is saying tiring. don't it's let it go. It's a drain on the nation. The question is, even if you let it go, the, 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 the uh, electricity that we are let go, this what government today is complaining that all oh, those who sold it to I think we also government government without we also accountability we, we, we didn't we get go the right way we, we, we didn't we talk, privatize we the electricity the way we should we, have it was you know this uh, see, how do I put it man do, no do man you know, kind of thing and that's why seriously Aisha we talk about here you're you're talking about West Nigeria Airways do you know I I I traveled from Lagos to Dubai Dubai to New York and Airbus A380, mm. you know, in Dubai, they have more than 200 pieces of it. Yeah. 200. Do you know why they were able to acquire that much? Accountability. Oh, sure. Not sloganeering. Oh. Is when, you come, when you come, mm. you say, you come, you tell people what they want to hear. Now, the vice president is still telling you what you want to hear. Government has no business in business. And, and so, and then and as see, if, forward, see, as see, if the do. questions are still there <laughs> unanswered. If for 25 years, out of these 25 years, you had two military governments, Abacha and Abdul Salami, <laughs> you had two <laughs> for another presidents, five years, two presidents who have come out military and then civilian, so they have come there. And, uh, see, what if I it am is telling not you, working, it is not what working. What I am telling Let's you is work out of accountability. It. Okay, yeah, so when forward, when are you going to get that accountability? When it's ineptitude, fix accountability. We could, I shall wait. We could have been waiting for accountability still, on Nitel. You will still today. be waiting for it. Are we not waiting? Are, are we, are not we not waiting for accountability on Nitel? Right in the studio now, we are running on generator. Leave. So moving forward, what do we do? When you say accountability, what do what do we do? Leave government with it. I shall talk about voting out of conviction. I talked about government being accountable to the people. And then people should also learn to hold government accountable. If yeah. you like, privatize the refinery. They're not going to privatize it to you. They'll privatize to themselves. And then they continually give you these examples of, oh, government have no business in business. Once you have a system where there is no accountability, there is ineptitude reigns supreme, you're going to have all of these slogans. What we have are slogans. Let's oh. begin to look for solutions. Okay. Well, um, it's best our government give those refineries to the relevant bodies and stop meddling in business activities. We appreciate you sharing your opinions with us. Itebo Abraham is in support of Liberia's last advocacy. Nigeria, can we ever agree? As he says, even if you divide Nigeria into 100 countries, our problem will still be with us. We all need behavioral programming. Whereas Niji Bangwe also says we shall definitely get to that tipping separation point one day. Thank you, Itebu Abraham and Niji Bangwe. We appreciate your participation with us on our conversations. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Treasure asks us to stop being religious. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.